of incredible baggage, torture, trauma, seeing family uh, mutilated, uh, family killed, family uh, thrown from their homes, people persecuted, removed from their jobs, a whole range of things that they have to deal with. If I was able to remove them and put them back in a refugee camp where they could wait, um, I'd, I'd do so. The stress that they're under is absolutely extreme, you know, indefinite detention, uh, not knowing when you're going to get out, um, the threat of being sent back to a country that you fear you're going to be murdered or tortured um, upon return. I mean, this is the most extreme form of stress you can possibly conjure up, and, and our, our country is doing this to these people. Police, using water cannon, tear gas and batons, stormed a desert detention centre in South Australia seven weeks ago. They acted to quell a riot. Would-be refugees had set fire to buildings, pulled down a perimeter fence and were throwing stones at guards. Four buildings were destroyed in all and another two set on fire, including the school which was only recently renovated. The August riot at Woomera Detention Centre marked a new low in Australian public opinion towards the refugees. When they come over here, I jump the queue, destroy their paperwork and expect to be walking the streets in 40 days. And if they don't, they split the dummy and burn down buildings. I'm sorry, that's, that's pretty negative, not only for the Woomera community, but probably for the whole of Australia. You can't just take them out and shoot them. Uh, that's been made clear, but there's other things that... Uh, you, they've got to get to the source, but you can't just throw them in the water and drown them. You've got to process them, but there's a way that process has got to take. Look, I'm getting sick and tired, and I'm sure you are. I'm sure a lot of people out there listening to this program are as well. It is time we kick these bums out of the country who keep on breaking the law. The closest capital city to Woomera is Adelaide. There, the riots sent talkback radio into a frenzy, just like the rest of Australia. They're used to being rather barbaric. You just don't wreck here. the furniture in oh, this country. Yes, I don't think... Well, can you imagine going over to one of their countries and then trying to do things our way? Well, the way you brought up, Jeremy. We would get short trips. South Australia's newspaper, The Advertiser, warned in an editorial that we are all at risk. Australia is alone in the Western world with its compulsory detention for asylum seekers. Since Four Corners went inside our detention centres earlier this year, this policy has come under even further strain. At the Woomera Centre, there have been two acts of mass disobedience. Denied newspapers, radio, television and even local phone calls they broke out of the isolated centre in June and staged a protest in town. Two months later, detainees rioted. This time, the Immigration Department responded with full force. There were some 800 asylum seekers at Woomera. 51 were charged with alleged involvement in the riot. The Immigration Department is yet to confirm what those charges will be, but has said it is serious. In fact, there's another refugee going in now, so that makes 11. Under heavy security, the alleged rioters were bundled off to Adelaide, where they're currently in custody awaiting trial. What eruptions are they going to cause throughout dear little South Australia? It's going to turn out to be very ugly. These people are led in our community, which they're stupid government's letting them in. Well, we do things differently in this country. In October last year, the Howard government created two separate classes of refugees. The first is for asylum seekers processed overseas and invited to Australia. And the second is for those who make their own way here, uninvited. The government calls them queue jumpers. 
I escaped Iran. I went to Pakistan in 1988, and after a year of living a, a lifestyle of refugee in, in Pakistan, I arrived to Australia with quite a contrast. Fahad Nouri came to Australia as an authorised refugee. He successfully applied to Australian authorities back in the 1980s from inside a refugee camp overseas. On his arrival, he received extensive support. But this is not the case with those who are labelled as Q-jumpers. Uh, we're not realising that uh, our investment on the first few weeks and months uh, would help this uh, settlement process in the long term much easier. Fahad works with a coalition of mostly church groups who help the second class of refugees. Those who came here illegally have been through the detention centres and who are treated very differently by the Howard government. These men are so-called illegals. They were released from Woomera Detention Centre after immigration concluded they have a well-founded fear of persecution back in Afghanistan. Legally, they can't be sent back, but life can be made hard. As members of the second class of Australia's refugees, the Afghanis have been given three-year temporary protection visas, or TPVs. This means they get $172 a week as long as they're unemployed. When they were first released, the government reserved a couple of nights accommodation for them in a backpacker hostel. Then they were on their own. Fahad found them this flat, and those who moved in are a floating population. We are six people living in this house, but uh, sometimes uh, our friend go to some place for work, and uh, after 10 days or 50 days, uh, our other friends from uh, released from Womera camp and come here uh, live with us. If you could speak to some of these men, I have recently had a baby and uh, I take my baby around when I'm visiting as much as I can. So many of them break into tears, uh, just remembering their own child's uh, children. Some of them have left pregnant uh, wives back home. They haven't even seen the pictures of their ch children. They are not able to uh, communicate the way that we know communication around the world. Sending a message to their family is limited only to a few Red Cross messages that would take three months. Here, 35 Afghani men occupy five flats in the same block. And it's true they have left behind their wives and between them over a hundred children. They were hoping they could bring their families out here. But with the temporary protection visas, this is prohibited. And they lose their visa if they leave the country to go and visit them. The Afghanistan they fled is the Afghanistan of the fanatical Taliban government. Almost to the month they fled, the ABC witnessed public executions inside an Afghani soccer stadium. These Afghanis are Hazaras. They're Shiite Muslims from a country run by fundamentalist Sunni Muslims. Afghani Shiites can face public execution for their faith, language and culture. Their fears stay with them. افغانستان رو ترک کردیم و هر کس یک دلیل خاصی برای ترک کردن افغانستان داره و ما هم دلیلی دارم که لازم نیست در اون مورد علمه با شما توضیح کامل بتونم که چرا